So how long is it really taking you to get adapted to using fat for fuel? Okay, it's not like it's this magical thing where suddenly you start eating bacon and cut out the bread and your body's just burning fat. No, keto adaptation takes some time, but there's a big question out there in the world of how long does it really take for someone to start using fat for fuel properly, start using ketones, or get what we call keto adapted or fat adapted. Well, we have to look at the big picture and what overall goes on in the body and what we're looking for in order to get fat adapted. See, the big picture that we have to look at is getting our glycogen levels chronically low. That sounds complex, and I'm gonna break it all down here in just a second, but the whole focus of this video is to give you a foundation of whether it takes weeks, months, or years, and it all depends on who you are as an individual. Hey, we've got new videos coming out almost every single day these days, so 7.30 a.m. Pacific time, make sure you're keeping alert because we probably have a new video coming out. So hit that red subscribe button, then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. Also, after you're done watching this video, if you eat grass-fed, grass-finished meat, then you definitely want to check out ButcherBox. So I put a link down below in the description where you're going to save some money on getting some grass-fed meat delivered right to your doorstep. So don't even have to go to the grocery store, a couple clicks of a button, and you've got some good grass-fed ribeyes, some good grass-fed fillets, whatever you want, coming right to your doorstep. And again, you're going to save some money if you're getting it through that link down below in the description. So after this video, check them out for sure. All right, so what we have to look at chronically low levels of glycogen. What does that mean? Okay, glycogen are the carbohydrates that are stored in our muscles. Okay, that's all it is. Now, let me make something very, very clear. To get into ketosis, you don't need to have your glycogen levels depleted. Okay, to create ketones in your body, your glycogen levels don't need to be fully depleted. We don't have to go there. But in order to get fat adapted, they do need to be chronically low. And the reason is, is because chronically low levels of glycogen are going to signal hormonal systems to upregulate fat burning. Okay, it's gonna upregulate the utilization of fat, which therefore exposes our body to be able to start getting fat adapted. So if we are constantly coming in and out of ketosis, it's harder to get adapted. Another example would be uh, fasting, intermittent fasting, but not while in ketosis. That's not gonna get you fat adapted as quickly as say just staying in ketosis or ketosis plus fasting. So if you look at the little pyramid here, I have exercise and I have fasting there to show that they're at the bottom of the pyramid because those are increasing like sort of a, an acute response to keto adaptation. Now here's an analogy to make some sense of it. If you wanted to learn a language, you're going to learn a language a lot faster by immersing yourself in the culture or within that language spectrum, right? So if you wanted to learn Italian, you'd go and you'd live in Italy. That'd be the best way to learn it, okay? Whereas if you were to go to Italy for one week and then come back, go back to Italy and then come back, you're going to learn the language a lot slower, right? Well, fat adaptation works the same way. When you expose yourself to ketones or you expose yourself to chronically low levels of glycogen, you're constantly upregulating the hormones that are basically allowing this process to occur. So now it begs the question, how long does it really take? How long does it take us to have these low levels of glycogen before our body really preferentially uses fat and we're just in that ultimate just euphoria of just using fat magically for fuel, right? Okay, well, first of all, we have different variables. We have fixed variables. These are kind of predetermined ones, like our predetermined insulin sensitivity, which, by the way, can change if you're doing keto. But then we have our genetics, and then we have our age, and we have our sex. These are all fixed things that we really cannot change a whole lot. Then we have environmental things, our diet quality. Yes, believe it or not, even the quality of your keto diet can influence how quickly you get fat adapted. We've got sleep, we've got stress, all these things I can't really address in this video because they're too, there's just too much, too many variables. So it's just important to know that there could be a wide variety of timelines based on these different genetic factors. Now, it all depends on the yardstick that you're using to measure fat adaptation, okay? So we have different yardsticks in which we can look at it. We see fat adaptation occurring from weeks all the way to years, believe it or not. And this is a good thing, not a bad thing. It doesn't mean it's gonna take you years to get used to using fat for fuel. Here, let me give you an example. When we first look at a timeline of weeks, we can look at a study that was published in the journal Metabolism. So this study took a look at five cyclists. Okay, they went on the ketogenic diet, they were on the ketogenic diet for four weeks. Now, they were measuring overall how their recovery would be and their respiratory exchange rate and a couple other things. Now what they found is that after four weeks, their overall recovery after a 65% VO2 max event was totally fine. So meaning after four weeks, they had gotten adapted enough as far as exercise was concerned to recover fully. Then their respiratory exchange rate decreased, indicating that they were able to get more units of oxygen after those four weeks. They were adapting. They 
after four weeks, that respiratory exchange rate improves, which means that they're efficiently getting oxygen. So they're, of course, adapting. Okay, then next up, their glycogen levels started to replete. Okay, so after four weeks, they started to see, okay, these guys are getting keto adapted enough that their glycogen levels are restoring, whether it's from protein that's going through gluconeogenesis or whatever. The whole point in saying this is that, yes, we can see that after four weeks, you are getting keto adapted. Clearly, your body is starting to understand how to use ketones and fat for fuel. Okay, but then we have to say, what about another yardstick? What about over the course of months? Because if we just took that study, we could just end it all and say, okay, at four weeks you're keto adapted, but I don't think that applies to everybody. So this next piece of information comes from Verta Health, which is a very reputable source. So it's not a clinical study, but it found that when people went on the ketogenic diet, they had an increase in uric acid production, big spike, and then it came back down after three months. Now, what does this have to do with ketones? Okay. Uric acid competes with ketones, okay, another organic acid from the body. So what that means is when there is a presence of ketones, when someone starts ketosis, your body is going to resorb the ketones, and therefore forcing the excretion of uric acid, since those acids compete within the kidneys for resorption. So if ketones all of a sudden come into the equation, then uric acids get in the boot because they compete, right? So ketones are going to get the preferential treatment, and the uric acid kidneys say, get out, you're gone. So that's why we have a big spike in uric acid coming in the urine, because it's getting kicked out because of the ketones. But after three months, that comes back down to normal. So what that tells us is that after three months, the kidneys sort of adapt. The, the kidneys are saying, okay, we get it now. Now the uric acid levels are normal, and it ends up making it so that we're not just constantly hoarding all the ketones. We're excreting just what we need to excrete. So a nice adaptation occurring there. But then the other thing we have to look at is the overall mitochondrial biogenesis. Now, mitochondria die and then come back to life in a new form, right? So we get new mitochondria, so it's, it's recycling. It's not like we have one mitochondria that we're born with for life and that mitochondria changes. What happens is the mitochondria gets exposed to fat, it gets somewhat fat adapted, it dies off, and then, of course, it recycles, okay? It's a half-life. So what ends up happening is as a mitochondria gets exposed and gets fat adapted, it goes through various half-lives, and eventually new mitochondria will be fully adapted. Think of it as like evolution, okay, and adaptation. Our mitochondria are evolving with this exposure to fat. Now, it's been found that in order to reach equilibrium at the mitochondrial level, we have to go through about five half-lives. So what that means is, like, when the mitochondria dies every one to two weeks, we have a new one born. That's a half-life. Okay? Then that one dies, another one is born. That's a half-life. It takes, on average, about five half-lives for this to occur, for fat adaptation to truly occur. So by the time we've gone through five half-lives, the mitochondria is now accustomed to using fats. So based on that, we can see that it could take five to ten weeks for the mitochondria to truly become fat adapted. So now we're looking at this. Now we're looking more like a couple months, right, for true mitochondrial fat adaptation. That's probably more along the lines of a more realistic approach, because that's not necessarily with athletes, that's with anybody. Okay, a lot of these studies look at athletes, which can skew things because they have different factors that are you know, forcing glycogen depletion. Mitochondrial biogenesis is mitochondrial biogenesis, whether you're an athlete or not. So when we take a look at these studies that take a look at four weeks, three months, and 20 months, a year and a half, on resting glycogen levels, we see that there is a pretty significant adaptation still occurring at 20 months. So the way that we're measuring this is we're looking at how quickly the body is starting to reabsorb glycogen, essentially. So as long as we're resorbing glycogen and we're having an increase in the reabsorption of glycogen, it means that we still have an adaptation occurring. So this study shows that, sure, we have a big degree of adaptation occur at four weeks. We have another adaptation that's still occurring at three months. But then we have more adaptation that's still happening to a small degree after 20 months. All this is telling us is that even individuals that are on the ketogenic diet for a long period of time are still adapting even more. Now, we don't have studies that look at this over the longer picture. Like, I've been keto for pretty much nine years, right? So my degree of adaptation could be significantly more than someone that's been on keto for five years. We don't really know, but we do know that the adaptations are continuing to happen because glycogen is resynthesizing. So the keto diet, we've barely scratched the surface with what we can get out of it. And we don't even know fully the adaptation that can occur and how much our bodies can thrive in this state. If we allow ourselves to adapt, then the cells will adapt more. So yes, you will get fat adapted after a few weeks to some degree. Your body will know how to use those fats and you'll get some benefit. After a few months, you're gonna get even more. 
After a couple of years, you might get even more. But I'd say the sweet spot where we see the biggest influx, where we see for sure with mitochondrial biogenesis, probably two to three months. Okay, as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.